Douglas Smith. Um, and this is the city, the regular city council meeting for July the 13th, 2021. We want to welcome uh, all our guests tonight, as well as the KJIW and the West Hill World, Kennedy, and anybody uh, in the other media. I hope I, I didn't miss anybody, but if I did, we want to welcome everybody. Uh, Miss Sandy Calder Calderon. Davis. Here. St. Columbia. Crockett. Franklin. Franklin. Present. Etherly. Forward. Here. St. Columbia. Here. Here. Crockett. We have four. Right. All right. Well, the uh, looks like we have a quorum, so we're going to get started on the agenda. And the first item would be the minutes from May 18th. Miss um, Ramsey, how do you want to handle these? Do them all at once or individually? We have to do them individually. So the copies of the minutes were in your packet. The first item, the first minutes are May the 18th. I move we accept those uh, minutes of May the 18th as printed. Mr. St. Columbia moves the adoption of the minutes for May the 18th. Is there a second? Anyone want to second the motion to adopt the minutes for May 18th, 2021? We have everybody here. Do we have enough people? We were at the meeting. Anybody want to second the motion? Second. Is that Ms. Davis? It is. Ms. Davis. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any questions or comments about the Motion, if not, call roll. St. Columbia. Franklin. Yes. Crockett. Davis. Yes. Forward. Forward. Forward, absent, abstain. Etherly, St. Columbia. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, Smith. Yes. I'd make it four. Okay, motion passes. Don't the minutes May 18th. And the next item uh, would be the minutes from May the 20th. It's, uh, again, in your packet. Anybody want to make a motion for May the 20th? So move. Is that Mr. Franklin? Second. Second. Okay. okay. I, think, I think Mr. Franklin moved and uh, Mr. Franklin be seconded the motion. Any discussion or questions about the motion? If not, call the roll. Franklin? Yes. Davis? Yes. Etherly? Forward. Yes. Crockett. St. Columbia. Yes. Four, yes. Okay, motion passes. The ne next item on the agenda is are the minutes from June the 1st. Uh, is there a motion to adopt the minutes from June 1st? So move. So move. Mr. Franklin moves adoption of the minutes from June 1st. Is there a second? I'll second. 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 I'm sorry, I was a little garbled here, but I'm going to say Mr. St. Columbia seconded the motion. You're pretty confident in having questions or comments. If not, call the roll. Forward. Yes. Etherly. Franklin. 
Yes. Crockett? Yes. St. Columbia? Yes, yes. Davis? Yes. Four yes. Thank you, motion passes for adoption. Uh, the next item is, are the minutes from June the 15th. I would see if the captain was in there. Is there a motion? So move. Mr. Franklin moves that we adopt the motion of the minutes from June 15th. Is there a second? Second. The state is seconds the motion. Any other questions or comments? If not, call the roll. St. Columbia? Yes. Yes. Franklin? Mr. Franklin? Crockett? Davis? Yes. Forward? Yes. Etherly? Mr. Franklin? Smith? Yes. Four yes. yes. Motion. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. I got you, Mr. Franklin. Thank you. The last item on the agenda. I mean, I'm sorry, on the other minutes. Uh, uh, a clarification yes. of the minutes yes. from December the 1st, 2020. Uh, yes. Ms. Ramsey, yes. you want to discuss, do you want to discuss that, Ms. Ramsey? Uh, it was, uh, I neglected to go in and change the increased rates uh, on the uh, pandemic money. And we just need to clarify it. Uh, is there a motion to adopt a clarification of the minutes for December 1st, 2020 as described? Second. Mr. Franklin moves. Ms. Davis seconds the motion for adoption of the clarification of the minutes. Any questions or comments about the clarification or the motion? If not, call the roll. St. Columbia? Yeah. Crockett? Forward? Yes. Etherly? Yes. Davis? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Five, yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. And that should do it for the minutes. Uh, so we're going to move on to the action items on the agenda. The first thing up, uh, Mr. Turner, will be the treasurer's report. You're recognized. Okay, uh, I don't have a full treasurer's report. This is, uh, I guess we, we moved the first meeting to this week. I tried to have one. I have most of the uh, funds uh, completed, but I lack one uh, statement from our street fund, debt service fund. So rather than just give you that entire report uh, without that report, I'll just wait. Uh, maybe in a couple of days, I'll get that that report that statement in, and I can get you guys a complete treasurer's report uh, at the next regular scheduled council meeting. I think that's next Tuesday, anyway. Uh, but for now, uh, for uh, quickly, I wanted to discuss the general fund. I did send the council members a copy of the financial report for the general fund, and so I just want to quickly, briefly, just go over that for a second. And uh, as of June. Uh, 30th through the first half of the year, uh, the city had uh, $144,876 in cash available uh, through the first half of the year. And we actually had a gain in operations uh, of $218,000, uh, $218,364,000. And that gain from operations, if you look on page, um, 11, and you look in that second column that's uh, headed January 2020 through June 21st, you'll actually see uh, the gains or losses in operations that the city experiences. So it's reflecting a $218,000 gain in operations uh, for the city throughout the first half of the year. And uh, that $218,000 gain 
uh, comes on uh, even in I think we lost you there, Derek, at the end. Well, can anybody else hear him or is it just me? I, I, I can hear him. You can? I, I did, I, I don't now. I cannot hear him. He, he went off, it looked like. Yeah, it might have hit his mute button by mistake. He's off the screen. Somebody want to message him? Let him know. Oh, he's off the screen too? Yeah. I don't see him. Well, I didn't see him. I didn't know if he was. He's rejoining now. There he is. All right, there you are. There uh, you are. Also, um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't know. I'm at the office, so you know we've been having some internet uh, problems throughout the day. But like I uh, said, we, we we can hear you, and I, I think where you left off was the the two hundred eighteen thousand for operations balance. Okay. The first yeah, six so months of the year, and then you were about to say something, I think that's what we lost you. Okay, so throughout the first half of the year, we, we have an operating um, gain from operations of $218,000, a little over $218,000. Now that is despite us being a little bit behind projections and our revenues, um, we're actually like 1.65% behind projections, which amounts to about $129,000 behind revenue projections, but uh, most of that is due to us not receiving our property tax. And so you know that they've been having some issues over at the county and uh, they just had a replacement um, county treasurer. And so we're still working with them to try to get up to speed or caught up on our uh, property tax uh, revenues that are due to the city. So that's 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 part of that's the main reason why we're behind revenues, uh, revenue projections. But despite that, we're still operating uh, at two hundred eighteen thousand dollars in the positive so far this year. And also, we're um, as far as the expenditures are concerned, we're uh, four hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars under budget on the expenditures. So we're doing pretty good with uh, managing the money and spending money uh, as well. And so uh, just considering all of those things, we have, and I know last week, the council, they were considering giving some raises and um, uh, increasing base pay and things of that nature. And they were concerned with whether we could afford certain things. And I tell them that the way I determine whether we can afford something going forward, particularly if it's not something that's a one-time payment, depending upon uh, how much cash we have in the bank, but if it's something that's gonna go on for the remainder of the year or into future years, what I look at is uh, whether we have a budget surplus or a budget deficit. And so considering uh, all of the budget increases and changes in appropriations, which were budget increases and budget cuts to salaries, uh, adding the, the uh, sky cops and all the other things that they've added and things that they've cut, uh, they still have a budget surplus of $187,000. And they can see that if they look on page 11 of the general fund report that I sent them, it's, it's, uh, it's at the last page and it's that last number you're gonna see at the bottom. And anytime you want to know if we can afford something, particularly if it's going to be throughout the remainder of the year or if it's for an entire year, that's the number that I would look at. That's kind of like telling you how much income you have coming in. Uh, the projections are the income you have coming in and expenditures are your expenses, like your household expenses, whereas it's mortgages, car notes, utilities, 
And so that 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 number, that change in fund balance in the uh, budget column kind of lets me know how much we can afford in uh, increases to the uh, budget. And so right now, I, it look, it, it's showing that we can afford an additional $187,000 in uh, appropriations. So if it's something they want to add to the, to the budget, they have about $187,000 that they can uh, play with. Hey, Derek. Uh, as far as I as far as I can see, I don't I don't foresee anything. The way I mean, we're operating pretty good right now, and I don't foresee anything that'll change. We, we'll probably end up doing pretty well this year, uh, particularly if we can get the property tax revenue from the county. Hey, Derek, that was actually going to be my question. Okay. What would that What was that What would that one hundred eighty seven thousand look like with well, uh, conservatively speaking, with the property tax revenue. Well, that that one hundred eighty-seven thousand represents the budget, so it's not actual uh, revenue received. That that reflects the budget. That reflects projected revenues uh, minus the uh, approved appropriations that the council. Yeah, yeah, and no, the appropriations. And so it's showing how much they have authorized uh, the city to spend. And so you take a, take the the projected revenues and you take away their approved appropriations. That leaves one hundred eighty seven thousand dollars more that they can appropriate for whatever they need to salary increases, equipment, uh, supplies, whatever else they they feel the need to increase those appropriations for. So that's why I said they can they can afford another one hundred eighty seven thousand dollars in appropriations for anything that they feel that uh, they feel necessary that the city may need. In the general fund? In the general fund, yes. I'll, I'll give them an update. Uh, hopefully it'll be uh, at the next council meeting, which I think is next week on the, 20, uh, the 20th. And so hopefully I'll have that final uh, financial statement by the end. I can give them a complete uh, treasure report. Okay. And, 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 and Yes. Miss, I'm sorry, Ms. Turner. I, the, the mayor can finish up. I just got a couple of questions when the mayor is finished. Yes, sir. You say you have them now, you want to wait for the mayor to finish. What'd you say? Well, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'll, I'm finished. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Turner. <laughs> Mr. Turner, thank you, Mayor. Mr. Turner, uh, <laughs> the, the question that I got now, we have not have, have gotten all our expenditures in for the month, right? This $187,000 actually is what it looks like as of today, right? Well, the $187,000 is the budget. So whatever appropriations you passed on January 27th to 28th, plus whatever changes that you made to the budget throughout the year uh, regarding the um, salary increases, you made some salary decreases, uh, sky cops, and other things that you've added or taken from the budget, that 187 reflects how much in appropriations that you have left, considering okay. the projected revenues. So it's not actual, it's not the actual rev, it's not the actual expenditures. Now, if you want to know the actual expenditures, you will have to look in that second column. That okay. second column is the actual results for January through June. And so those numbers, so that number is. Yeah. I mean, that number is $3.4 million, right? So we're, um, actually we've had $3.4 million in expenditures through June, through June. And so if you take half of the budget, half of the budget would be, um, hold on a second. Half of the budget for that year would be $3.8 million, $3,898,000. We're actually $478,000 under budget right now, actual results. That's current. So, that's current. That's as of June. That's as of June. We're $478,000 so, under budget. Okay. okay. So, Mr. Chairman. And that's, that's the 
considering all the raise, that's considering all the raises, the sky cops and everything else that you've added to the budget and taken out of the budget. When you make those changes, I do those changes right then and there, so they are reflected in the next treasurer's report. Right. So, Mr. Turner, my question is this: since we have one hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars, I got I got some questions. So we're under, you know, you said make appropriations for other yeah. things. Well, um, my question is this: I know, you, and uh, Mayor, if you can, if you can chime in, how many full-time yeah. officers that we have on salary right now? Because see, last time we had this question, we said we had a hundred and now we had a million and some dollars because we didn't have enough officers. And I'm a million and some dollars, I'm sorry, because we didn't hire enough officers. Well, if we're understaffed, if we understaff the officers, those are salaries. If we understaff in the street and sanitation department, that's that's some of that money. If we the landfill has lost a couple of employees, uh, so that's some of that money that we still have to replace those individuals. So it, it is a savings as of now, but when you put, when you staff those people back up, that becomes, you know, what it is. Because how many officers do we have, full-time officers and part-time? How many officers do we have all together? I know the budget, how much is, how many officers the budget? Let me, let me tell you now, yeah, in the budget, you you actually budgeted for twenty five officers in the budget. Right, right. So, but it would it would reflect the it reflect the expenditures if we do not have the, the officers. It would look like there's a surplus if we don't have the twenty five officers that we are slotted for. Right. That's how we had gotten the one point the, the one point two million dollars that we had because we were not staffed. Right. Yeah, and we have a hold on. We have a lot of other employees who are not working. So yes, this money is there because we've had people to quit, move off, leave the city. So we we have slots that we so we could fill, but we can't get the people because if I'm correct, we're starting advertising for positions. Am I correct? Yeah, a, a lot of those savings are due to the fact that you know when you budgeted, you budgeted for 25 officers. So obviously yes, we have we have, haven't had. Uh, 25 officers. I think we have 18 right now, and so yeah, some of that, some of that reason for us being under budget, some of it is due to um, um, lack of filling all the positions. Yes, sir, and, and, and that's why I want our listening audience to understand that you know, I, and I'm not disputing the treasury report. I thank you, Mr. Turner, for uh, going through it, and I think that. We need to uh, set aside a meeting once a month, so and publish these uh, the financial report on the city's page, so that the citizens can see what is going on. I thank you for being thorough with your report, uh, but those are some of the things that I'm concerned about. I know it looks like, and I'm we look like we have the funds, but we also are down offices. Uh, I think there's people in the street department that uh, we need to hire sanitation department we got and the landfill and uh, I see that we got uh looking at hiring a parks and recreation person so we have to take this in consideration that we have lost a lot of people and we're still advertising to pay people and also human resource person as well so we need to look at that um uh, and I can say Mr. Trish, I'm done I thank you uh, for your report I would like to I, I would like to see if we can have a a meeting a month with you so you can put, let, let's go line by line, item by line, item to look at the budget so we can say uh, in, the, in the positive. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Franklin. And like I said, I'm, I'm open, you know, I've always been open to meeting with you guys anytime that, that you want to. So uh, that, that's okay with me. Once a month, whenever you guys decide you want to meet and go over these finances, that's fine with me. But I would also like to add that even if we had been fully staffed in the police department, we still probably we, we would have been under budget because there are some other items that we we just haven't been uh, spending a lot of money on. So it, yes, it, wouldn't, have been, it wouldn't have been as big of a surplus, uh, but we 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 would have been under we would have been, still been under budget. Yeah, yes, sir, and I and I and I believe that, but we still have not hired a human resource person. We still not we still have not hired 
uh, with Mr. Jones came last week and said we needed to. Uh, and, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Let me stop. If that's the case, we would look at the CDL driver, giving them, you all were looking at it, to give them a uh, $20 raise. So we, we actually do. Look at the police department. You can't feel 25 stock in some kind of incentive to get officers here. Some people in the body are looking to also be looking to increase the police department. Those people who are there, we need to try to have a meeting to discuss how can we uh, raise. Mr. Fiber, you're going in and out. I have a question. Uh, Love Mr. Fiber. Mr. Fiber, I'm going to take a question from Mr. St. Columbia, and then we'll, we'll go back to you. So that is to the next agenda, so we can see how we can raise people up so we can be in a competitive market. Mr. St. Hey, Columbia. Uh, Franklin, uh, let, let me, let, let me uh, kind of bring something to your attention, though. When you, you talk about police, uh, increasing the the, the the staff on the police, you you actually have 25 officers in the budget. And so it's just simply, if you if they make the promotions, if, if, when they start doing the promotions, they will, they can gain seven additional uh, patrolmen, but the patrolmen that are in the positions now have to be promoted. So once those guys are promoted to these other positions, that, that will open up seven additional positions. They will open up six positions. You have one more position that's available in patrol in that patrol officer class right now. You have 16 positions. Well, you have 15, but you budgeted for 16. And so taking into account that one patrol officer and the, the two, uh, well, actually three, well, the, 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 the two additional Officers that you can promote, then you know that you can uh, get up to about seven seven additional officers. Uh, Mr. Turner, uh, excuse me, Mr. Franklin, you're you're going in and out. Let me, Mr. St. Columbia has. I, I, I wouldn't send more. Mr. Franklin, we can't hardly hear you. We're going to let Mr. Uh, St. Columbia ask his question, and we'll come back to you. Go ahead. Yes, sir. That's fine. Okay, uh, Mr. Turner, uh, I think generally what you're trying to uh, bring out is the point that we have a surplus, uh, and even if we entirely with all the uh, the uh, actuaries that we've required of them, uh, we still have a surplus, but not as maybe, but we, we have a surplus. Is that correct? We have a budget... We right, have to, we have budget surplus because you haven't appropriated all of the projected revenues. And when I project my revenues, I'm pretty conservative. And so chances are we're gonna exceed the projections, particularly when the um, property tax begins to come in and we're already ahead of projections on sales tax. And so I'm thinking we're gonna exceed projections. But when we're talking about the budget, it's actually yeah. my projection revenue and the appropriations that you have made right so that, that is hundred eighty seven thousand dollars yes sir so you can increase the budget I, I i understand that thank you very much thank you mr mayor okay before we move on, can other, before we go back, hold on any other questions about the budget and then we'll come back to you any, any, i mean not the budget i'm sorry the treasurer's report before we go back any other council members have any questions on the treasurer's report. We're not leaving the discussion. I'm just talking about the treasurer's report right now. Okay, Mr. Franklin, go ahead. Thank you. What I was saying, uh, I wasn't asking about adding any more officers. What I was saying, you know, we could be competitive with the pay to try to see how can we get more, more people to apply. If we only have 17 and, we, and the budget is 25, we, you know, we, we want to get, want to see how can we, with the incentive of getting people here, can we raise what the starting pay is? 
that was my concern, not to say we want to, Mr. Turner, not to add more to the budget, but if we can look at how we can cut something to give an incentive, uh, like, you know, I think we, we can with $11 and we can bump it up to like $13 and move the, and move the other people that are troubling first class or second, whatever second class, whatever the next rank is, to move them up to give people an incentive to want to come here. Is, is not much, but I know uh, I looked at Forest City, what they're starting up. They started up at $13. That would, that would better help us if we had a, a better starting pay. And then, you know, we could start working with the people that, that are within the department as a promotion wise to see once the promotion check is given to give our employees that incentive. But to give people who are already trying to come into the department some kind of incentive. And then try to work, try to start, tell us what can we do with the local businesses and see how would they help us, you know, with that's like double quick Wendy's, McDonald's, things like that. See what kind of incentive would they give us for our office as well. I'm done. Any other questions? Okay, well, Mr. Mr. Turner, go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Turner. I was just saying all this stuff, we can discuss all those things, all those items. Like you said, when you want to have a monthly uh, financial workshops, I guess, uh, we can discuss all those things there. And it's probably, a, it'll probably be better because things aren't things that you can kind of uh, figure out in a two hour city council meeting. You know, these kind of things take some research and some, some thought process into it. And so whenever you guys decide that you want to get together and discuss the city's finances, just, just let me know. Okay, thank you, Mr. Turner. Other questions from the council at this point? We're probably gonna revisit some of this if we get to it in, the, in later in the meeting also, but um, okay, we'll move, move on to the next item on the agenda. Mr. Jones, are you on yet? Well, well, Mr. Well, Mayor. Yeah. Well, the next item on the agenda, I want to uh, ask if they wanted to. Uh, well, one of the issues was about my salary, increase my salary. Oh, I'm sorry. Item. I'm sorry. And so one of the things I, I asked. My apologies. Uh, I, I, I was. I just saw a treasure report. You're. You're. Uh, go ahead. <clears throat> well, that's. Fine. I'll introduce. That. That, I'm sorry. The salary discussion. I think we left off last time a discussion of raises and down on the agenda i believe somewhere uh is the 20 dollar an hour increase for cdl drivers which um we can discuss at the end of it last time we brought that up along with um the request for the treasurer's um raise at the same time, and I think if y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's where we left it, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm going to introduce it that way and open it up for discussion. Yeah, well, what happened was that they wanted to know if we could afford it. Uh, so we, I went back over the, uh, well, someone made it a motion, and uh, it wasn't second because they didn't have the information that they needed, particularly whether we could afford it or not. Uh, and uh, I said earlier, uh, if you look at the budget surplus, we have we made a lot of cuts to the to the budget, and they've made some additions, even though, and they also made uh, salary increases for a few people. And despite all of that, they still we still have a uh, budget surplus of one hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars. And so, and like I mentioned earlier, that that would be enough to cover the raises that they want to give for, if they want to give a raise to me, uh, increase the uh, base pay for the CD drives. And also I think they had considered increasing uh, salary for the foreman as well. And so after reviewing, and the question was asked, could we afford it? And I'm telling them that uh, based on my analysis and looking at the financial statements through the first half of the year, uh, the city could afford to uh, increase appropriations for those items in the in the budget, and also additionally, we we like I said, we've cut, we're under budget right now, uh, and I expect expenditures to 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 increase over the course of the year, 
Uh, so even adding increase my salary the foreman and increasing the salary for the uh, uh, in my opinion any financial harm and we could afford it as far as the budget is concerned mr mr mayor if i may go ahead mr turner now i want i want to be clear about something now as of right now, Mr. Mayor, I have no the only problem that I have is this. With the crime in this area and fire, the CDL driver, that, that's a good thing. But Mr. Turner, I would agree to that, but you need to change a couple of things. I would agree to this. This is just me, I'm one vote, but I would agree that we look at your salary and the and the uh, the uh forms right now. That's what I consider. Reason why with crime, it would it'd be it'd, it'd kind of be. I know we only deal with a couple of people, but with the crime, you look at police and fire. You want to make sure that those people are, are, are well taken care of. Now, I I would I would I would put it in a motion if if the body would agree that we need to look at police, fire, and CDL drivers. But first of all, we need to look at police and fire. As a, as a to get them together because we we got a kind of kind of we not kind of we have a high crime area here in Helen West Helen and I wouldn't want it to be said that we took care of other we take care of those people who are uh, first responders and frontliners I'm not knocking the the, the, the CDL drivers because we need them as well but uh, in Forest City they start their CDL drives out at at fourteen seventy five an hour we're going to twenty. And uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not with it, but I. We need to make sure why we have this surplus, Mr. Turner, that we that we have. We need to look at this. We need I, those um, foremans should be paid because I don't want us to be hit with a lawsuit on that. And then we have you. We need to set a meeting aside to go ahead and try to see, just like you went thoroughly through this uh, treasure report. We need that to make some determination on how, what can we afford to give police, fire, and sanitation. Twenty dollars is a lot. We need to try to be how, see what's the happy medium for oh, police, wow. fire, and uh, and uh, CDL drivers. Because we need we need we need fire, we need police, and we need CDL drivers. Now those you and those uh, foremen. Uh, I, I, I'm I, I'm for that. Uh, I'm for that. So if if we if the body decides, I mean that's what I'm for right there, in that in that order. And I, I'll, uh, whatever the body's pleasure is, I'm with it. But as of right now, that's what I I would consider that we do right now. You and the uh, foreman to take care of that, and then see, c come back and see. We can do it next week at the next meeting. Come back and see. When you go through your report again, when you go through your report, how does it, those, those three salaries, how will they impact in, impact the, uh, the budget? No, the, uh, the what you call uh, the expenditures then. Okay. And, and, and Mr. Franklin, I'd like to also add that I think that the initial request for the uh, CDL drivers was $17 an hour. And I think during the meeting, someone brought up $20. But I think the initial request by uh, Mr. The, the Public Works Director was seventeen dollars, and I think someone else mentioned twenty along the line. Where I I am on, Mr. Turner. I am on. Yes, sir. I understand. I understand it, Mr. Uh, Turner. I do understand that with the seventeen. But do you understand where I'm coming from? I understand. Oh, yes, sir. I understand the need for CDL drivers. But when you look at the pay of a starting officer, when you look at the pay of a firefighter, those are, I've got to be a little concerned that our people will start saying, hey, maybe I need, need the police department to go drive the garbage truck, get a CDL license. So we want to make it competitive for our people. We need to figure out a breakdown of how can we get everybody to a happy point, a, a good starting point, and the people who are there already to see how can we bring them up. So they won't come in when we won't have the same problem that we had in district court. People making the same salary just coming in and only been there six months. And you make it with a person that's been there five years. Mm -hmm. we, need, we need to slow down. Not really. How not really. We, you got you. How can we fix this problem? Am I making sense what I'm saying to you, Mr. Turner? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, you so, do make complete sense. I just wanted to, to let you know that the initial request for the CDL drivers was $17. And, 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 and Someone, yes, sir, and I understand it, but what, I, what, what it brings some concerns to me that we have police and fire, Mr. Turner, who go to the- Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, we need, we, what we need to do is look at the situation. I'm not saying nobody, you say we got a, you no, know, the budget, black and white say we have a surplus. I want to make sure that the, the, the police and fire don't feel, you know, I want them to be at a starting point. It's like we're going to start uh, at 17 or $20. We can get off. We need to look at, look at this and see how can we. I think we're, we're starting to lose you again. I'm, I'm sorry. Can you hear me better now? I apologize. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. So I want to make sure that we are, we're not, you know, because what we, we got to take care of everybody, but we need to be fair with the practice of this. We, we, we this is the second time we've raised, am I right, Mr. Turner? It's been the second time we've raised CDL drivers. If we do it this time, it will be the second, second time or possibly the yeah. third. I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody for advocating for their people, but police and fire, even we, we got the water department we got to come and do. So we got a lot of issues we have to, we need to see prioritize this the right way to make sure that if we, if we take it, the police chief should be here to explain, hey, this okay. is what I like. The police chief should be here and say, this is what I, he, is he on? But he should be here saying, this is what I would like for my officers as a starting pay so we can get some more officers because we got 17 and, and, and the stopping point is 25. And I'm, I'm for I'm for whatever. But like I said, Mr. Turner, I'm for the uh, Right now, at this point, right now in my, in my life, I, I, I'm for the you and the formats. So, I mean, I, I'm with that right now. And if you can get us the, the numbers together on how, you, which way we, what we can give police, what we can give fire, and how can we make the center, the CDL drivers uh, as a starting pay comfortable so we can still have a, a little piece of cushion because we have lawsuits and things like that to come to the city. That we have to make sure we can pay these losses. Am I correct, Mr. Turner? Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. I, I'll get with the police chief and the fire chief and the public work director, and I will get with those guys. But, but to, Mr. Turner, hold on just a second. Mr. Franklin, so you agree <laughs> with you agree with the uh, raise for the treasurer and for the two foremen? Yes, sir. Well, may I help you out? Are you so willing to? Are you willing to put that in a motion tonight and we can take these one at a time as we get to them? I just did, Mayor. So moved. I moved to the treasure and the two formers. The formers, uh, what I would like to look for the former, we should look, actually look back because when we gave the foreman at the landfill, we gave him that pay starting off. So I would like to look and see can we uh, see, ask the city clerk or the treasurer how far can we go back to retroactive their pay? And actually, Mr. Turner is well. Is it? Can we go three weeks or, or a month just to make sure? I have a question. But before we move on, what, what, what is what is what your motion? There's, there's a motion on the floor. What exactly is your motion? I mean, you made a motion. I need to know what exactly your to motion to, is. to uh, take care of the treasure to make sure get the treasuries raised and the two formats. So you're moving, uh, you're making a motion. Mr. Franklin moves that we give a raise uh, for the treasurer and for the two foreman. Do you want to put numbers on that? I'm, uh, I'm sorry, or Mr. Mr. Yes. Mr. Turner, can you give, give us those numbers from the last time? Yeah, I have a request to move from 47, what I can't remember exactly, then it's 47 something to 60, that would be about $12,000. Uh, the former would, would oh. were requesting to be um, 45 to 50 oh. uh, in line with the uh, landfill deputy what's, director. Mr. Hey. Turner, what's the title on the on yours? 40. Uh, I'm sorry, I know that's awkward for you, but sometimes it's hard to. Uh, let me look at the total. Um, $12,877. Twelve, say that again, 12,000 what? $12,877. The other two would be $5,000 a piece. 
They're, they're moving from 45 to 50. Okay, let's deal with the motion first. Uh, so Mr. Franklin, it's your motion that we approve uh, a res that we that the council approves a resolution to increase the city treasurer's salary $12,877 a year and the two deputy directors of public works uh, to uh, $5,000 a year. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Okay. If you, if he, is there a second to the motion? Let me just ask that. Second. Ms. Crockett seconds the motion. Okay. Any questions or comments about the motion? Ms. Ms. Ramsey, what resolution would this be? It's not a resolution, it's just a vote. It's just a vote, okay. All right, so a motion, uh, Mr. I have a question. Who said that? I, forward, I, I, I have a Go question. Ahead. I thought that uh, earlier when we were working on the budget that we talked about 45 for the deputy directors. When, when did we increase this amount? It, it hasn't been increased. It is 45 now. They, they wanted to increase from 45. It had been a request to increase from 45 to 50. The I mean, it had just been tabled so many okay, times. I, I wasn't aware of that. Yes, it had been yes, tabled quite a uh, lot of times. So Again, I'm going to say I wasn't aware of that. So are you all oh, that they already had a raise? I'm sorry, that they already had a raise and then they're asking for another one? The deputy directors uh, got a raise, were put into um, exempt status, which meant they were no longer eligible for overtime. Uh, they wanted it to be the same uh, on parity with uh, the other deputy director over the landfill at the time. And that's where that's, that's how that started. And Mr. Jones, if you want to address that, feel free well, to. Wait, can I, can, I, can I say something, please? Yes. I'm with Mr. I'm with Ms. Ford. I thought that the discussion when we raised the other two deputy directors to 45, that the deputy director at the landfill was supposed to go to 45. I thought all three of them were supposed to be making the same amount. Well, I second that because that was what we, we, we talked I, about. I believe that is the case. And then Mr. Turner. I, I just came. I mean, in the budget, I believe that's true. Excuse me. I just came back on. I didn't hear what the question was. Well, the question was in the budget. You now, the deputy directors for sanitation street and landfill were all set at 45 or the same in the budget and the base pay. I don't know about the base pay, but it was in the budget. I think that's correct. No, I don't think it was in the budget. I think everybody was trying to get the same amount and it was suggested that we, uh, take the deputy director from the last field back to 45. Well, it's base pay, right. I don't know it, about it being uh, base pay, but I, I know it was supposed to go back to 45. And then the, uh, yeah. the land, I mean the street and the sanitation, the deputy director uh, would, all, all three of the salaries would be 45. And that is I what we propose. I remember, I remember it the same way. For what it's worth. It, wasn't, it was not changed in the budget. You increased the, those two positions when you gave, like the other raises, when you gave the payroll clerk and a deputy clerk, and when you gave all those other raises, that's when you increased the foreman to 45,000. It wasn't increased in the budget. It was increased after that when you made the other uh, change to, to salaries. It's attorney, if I may, I remember, Kim. <laughs> I remember, I remember this time why. Well, I remember, I, I'm sorry, I remember this way. What happened was this, Miss Ford and Miss Crocker, you're absolutely correct. What happened is they didn't bring the, well, remember we had this discussion about the landfill person. The landfill person came in at 50. He had to have 50. Remember the body was discussing, Miss Ford, you, me, Miss Davis, Miss Anthony was discussing, uh, Miss Crockett. With Mr. St. Clair was discussing how they, they said the person they wanted would come in at 50. And we thought then that we said 45 because uh, I was told you don't have to bargain with the salary. 
you make the salary. So that's how, but the mayor said 50, and they, that's what happened with the 50. That's why these other two people are not at the 50. We did bring them to 45, but this, the other, we had the, the landfill, if I'm right, Mr. Turner, and Ms. Ramsey, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the landfill salary is 50. Am I correct? Uh, no. Uh, yeah. City Andre Valley, for the record. What happened? The base pay for the landfill director was $50,000 for the base pay for the landfill director. Right, right. so that's... But, that's but, but, but let, me, let me interrupt you for a second, Mr. Franklin. At the time, before you merged the departments, you had $50,000 for the general manager. That was the base pay. That's how the mayor was able to hire the individual and they received that salary. All of y'all are correct that what you said, we were levelized that we want base pay to be 45 for all department, for all deputy directors going forward. So if there was a new person hired in that position, they would start at 45 instead of 50. And so that was the discussion that you all had, which you levelized them all at 45, but that person still had 50 because the departments hadn't been merged yet and they still had a general manager's position uh, at the time of, of the person's being employed and the base pay for the general manager position was $50,000. Y'all discussed breaking the budget level, level lines and being 45 across the board. And you wanted base pay to be 45 across the board going forward for any future person who would be the deputy director for landfill as well as street and sanitation. So all of them being 45 is what you all had discussed back then. But yes, so basically by, by every, everybody's right. The, the 50,000 was what was in there before, but they were all levelized, as Mr. Valley said, at 45. So what this motion would do is elevate those two other positions um, to 50. And, you know, um, as well as the treasurer's salary. Any other, uh, there were, I think there were some other questions or comments, but are there still any other questions or comments about the motion? If, if not, Ms. Ramsey, call the roll. Davis. St. Columbia. Crockett. Franklin. Yes. Etherly. Yes. Forward. Have two yes, four absent. No, I'm I'm here. My phone oh. was messing up. My vote okay. is yes. Yes, okay. Three yes, three absent are not online. Any other, is there anybody else voting? Didn't get heard. If not, I'll vote yes. Okay. Before yes. Does that get us there? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Um, all right, so. Thank we you, have, guys. Thank you, guys, for the for the increase. <clears throat> okay, so uh, if there, we are going to talk about some of these other issues on salaries here, if we get that far. Um, if we don't get that far, then we'll take uh, all the questions and and uh, under advisement for the next meeting. But the uh, we have some guests here, and I hate making them. I don't know what their schedules are. Mayor, I'm sorry. I'd like to include my vote. Just that. Ms. Davis, I'm sorry. Yes. You wanted to back yes on that last one? Is that what you're, you're kind of breaking up on us. Just if you would uh, message. That's what you said. Okay. Hello. So, that, I'm unless, sorry. unless there's, I guess we can always object in the next in the meeting. I think Ms. Davis said she wanted to back yes on the record for that. Um, I missed, I missed the, the thing. I'm sorry I had to leave the room. Uh, Do you want to be recorded on that vote? Well, what was what was the motion? The motion was to raise Mr. Turner's salary and the two uh, deputy directors of public works, sanitation and street. 
Okay. That's fine. Oh, it's 50,000. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you, you wish to be recorded as a yes vote. And if you change your mind, you can later, you know. Um, uh, I vote yes. Just let, I had I to leave the room. Um, this uh, technology <laughs> makes, these, makes these things complicated. We still have to approve the minutes next week. So, um, but I think we have enough recorded votes to, uh, to make it official. If okay. anybody wants to uh, change that later, go ahead. Uh, but, but the official vote stands. Um, so we're going to move on. And um, hold on a second. If, if it's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, Ms. Jones, hold on a second. We've got some guests. And, and if, uh, we'll come back to the issue. Um, we, can, we can actually discuss this issue while we're doing these other things, but I'm gonna go ahead and recognize Mr. Jack Daniels. Are you still on here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, um, thank you for being patient. Um, if you would um, go ahead, uh, we're here, you're here again for the event permit for the King Biscuit Blues Festival. Uh, there should be uh, information in your packet again. Um, I don't, we've spent a lot of time and we don't have to, you know, I don't feel like you have to, you shouldn't feel like you have to do the briefing you did last time. So if it's, if it's okay with you, I'm just going to open it up to questions from the council right away. And that might save all of us a little time. Is that okay, Mr. Daniels? Uh, yes, sir. Just uh, two notes, Mr. Mayor. I've added two memos to the packet uh, to highlight uh, very specifically and answer some of the questions that came up during discussion. One specific to uh, our safety plan and the other one specific to uh, direct payments for 2019 services to the city. Okay. Any questions, of, uh, Mr. Daniels, or comments on the memos? that were attached. Uh, I'll give everybody a chance to, to look it over, as well as myself, to be honest. I've looked at it, but I hadn't studied it. Any questions uh, about the memos or would, any questions you'd like to direct to Mr. Daniels? Uh, I got a couple of Mr. Mayor. Mr. Daniels, how are you doing this afternoon? Good, how are you? Hello. I was, I was, I was trying to see, did you uh, speak to Mrs. Verner Boyd? I'm pretty sure she's on the call as well. Uh, did you I have a chance to speak with her? And uh, because this is, this is me, I'm, I would like to, you know, for those streets that stay occupied not to be blocked because last year the uh, Brown's home for funeral Walnut, those, all those streets were blocked off. And this is the, like the third year. Now, this is what I want to say also, because it's rumored that I, I'm, that people are saying that I'm trying to stop the festival. The only thing I ask for, and correct me if I'm wrong, the only thing I ask for is, it, is to make sure that, that the safety uh, with the Delta variance is out. And Mrs. Boyd, those were my concerns with, to you, right? Yes, sir, those were, those were the major ones. Um, to answer your question directly, um, safety from a standpoint, I'm, I'm going to hit safety real quick because uh, there's a whole memo and I know there's a lot of language there and you guys are very busy. Uh, the, it, as, as far as our protocol, we match what the CDC guidelines are and then also the state of uh, Arkansas's guidelines um, at the minimum. And so that's, that's the basic. And I, I know I covered that at length in the last meeting, but to reiterate that point, um, we, we will go above and beyond. And some of those, some of those tick offs is having hand washing stations, Having, having social distance activities. And, and, and if there's more called for, that is more we'll do. And, and then in regards to Ms. Boyd, um, we, we cannot contact her by phone. Um, the, the numbers we're, that, I, that I have are not reaching her. We did send a letter to her place of business um, describing uh, the vehicle egress ag agreement that we, uh, that we work with most people who, uh, who have concerns about parking and egress downtown. Um, and, and in very brief, it states that if, if we block any of their egress, assuming she assigns the agreement, uh, any egress that we 
pay for the entirety of that day's rental of their spaces. So we've got a, an hour or so to rectify anything if she makes that aware. But um, if we block her space for any day, she would receive a payment of uh, $450 in compensation. So uh, we, we, we kind of offer that, I guess you could say, as an insurance policy and an opportunity for anyone downtown who um, is, is, is worried about their egress. We, we will do our best in, in reasonable safety measures to, to make their space and their, their lot especially available, especially for Ms. Boyd. Um, but uh, we, we, we hang that as, as an additional carrot to keep our operations team from doing anything unforeseen. And uh, I feel like uh, we, we marked it out as 30 spaces. That's 30 spaces at $15 a space. Uh, and that would be a direct payment to uh, Ms. Boyd if we block that on a, on a daily basis. We don't plan to, uh, it is not in our, in, our, in our plan. She is outside of our blocked area, but if something gets moved, a vehicle blocks her way, we are on the hook for that, as long as she signs the agreement. Uh, I think, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Boyd, if she's on the call, can she have a chance to respond? No, well, I, no, 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 Ms. Boyd's not right. This no. is no. this, this Ms. Crockett. This oh, is I'm not sorry, Ms. Crockett. You're always recognized. Okay, I have the question. You're saying if that I mean if she signs the agreement, what happens if she does not sign the agreement? Well, we will continue to honor our commitment to not blocking her space. Her 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 egress is outside of our of our blockaded areas, um, but. Uh, like I said, this is additional insurance. We worked this out um, and this was brought up in the 2019 permit process with the McNeary family. We have an agreement with them and an ongoing, uh, uh, a re-upped agreement for the 2021 event. So if, they, if we block their, 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 their egress, we're on the hook for that. Uh, we, we offer this agreement, again, as insurance and as the opportunity to be compensated if something happens that uh, is, not, um, is not planned for. So if it's not in the plans to do it, then why are we, I mean, I mean, why is this a part of the discussion? Other than we are, you know, you all are going to assure us that it's not going to be blocked. And it, and it has nothing to do, nothing personal, but I'm just trying to make sure that most people are taken care of. And this was an issue for her and her husband last year. So if yes. it's not, they have been blocked. They had been blocked many years prior to that. Many, and the, the uh, city did the. Uh, who is who is talking? It, it who is did talking? not. Did not pay when who they blocked. Excuse client. me. Who is who is talking? Who's As talking? Then of Helena West Helena, you blocked them for three years. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The that, city did not. The please me. Please me. Please me and her right now. Please. All right. The, and now. The citizens have to ask to be on the agenda. There's a process for that. Once we make exceptions, it'll be very chaotic. Uh, and it's already a little chaotic anyway, using this format. So my apologies, but you do have to be on the agenda. You have to be requested. It has to be approved and so forth. Um, and that started before I got here. Uh, I want to say this to Mr. Daniels, though. Um, we missed last year, obviously, because of COVID, but we did have this Con this conversation already and um, the main concern I had which is similar to theirs is that we did say we were going to well the festival said it was going to do something it didn't do regarding those concrete barriers and I made a commitment then and I want to reiterate that commitment tonight because we ended up not having it last year so nobody had to honor any commitments but I will uh, extend what I said for that one that I will personally show up. What do y'all get there about four, th four in the morning or four thirty or something crazy? If I remember, um, yes, sir. if you will promise to coordinate with me and I think we help you set it up even, um, but uh, I will personally go down there and I'll personally commit that those barricades are put where they're supposed to be put so that the problem that we're having when it comes to more egress and what we're talking about right now will not happen. And that we, 
you know, we'll follow the plan, follow the agreement. I'll personally make that commitment. That's what I did last time to sort of break that impasse. And, I, and it, but we just didn't have the festival. So I will offer to do that again. Uh, happily, we'll do that to try and avoid any miscommunication. And so Mr. it will be, be on me as well. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. You're recognized. First of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Daniels uh, for uh, working so hard and putting this thing together. And I, I think that what we found that KBBF is willing to do anything and everything possible to work with the community in every way we possibly can uh, and the city work with them. So we really have no problem. Uh, and they're willing to sign off to the fact that they're willing to pay people if there is a loss. It's kind of like a grant of insurance. And you personally, Mayor, said you'd go down there to make sure that the people are going to be satisfied. I see we have no problem and no need of discussing this matter any further. I make a motion that we accept KBBF's recommendation for the Blues Festival. I okay, make a motion. Ms. Sink, let me okay. Make some motion. Ask the council members to give me a. Okay, you Ms. made the motion. Wait, wait, just, 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 just let me make some motion that we approve the event permit for the Blues Cubist Blues Festival. Is there a second? Okay. Is there is there a second to approve the permit for the Cubist Blues Festival 2021? I'm going to second it, but I'm ready for discussion. Ms. Davis seconds the motion. Motion moved and seconded. Okay, now we'll open it back up. I apologize for cut off, but I'll uh, recognize here. Uh, well, I, 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 if I can. Can I say something? I think actually Ms. Ms. Crockett was the one I cut off, if I'm not mistaken. And then, uh, what I would like to say in response to what Mr. St. Columbia just said, the reason we're having this discussion now is because the prior years that they promised to do something, they did not do what they said they, that they were going to do. They came to the meeting, they promised to do it, and then when the Blues Festival got here, they did not uh, honor their commitment. They did exactly what they do all the time, is to block the people's uh, ingress. But, uh, and I think that's why we're having the, the conversation now, because they make the agreement, but they don't hold up to it because once they they put it down there and they don't move it, then if if Miss Board or whoever and I'm just using her name moves the moves the barricade from where it's not supposed to be, then the police are on the scene to arrest them, and that's not fair to them. I think the mayor has has said he would personally go down there and make sure it was done, so we would put the monkey on his back and let him handle that thing. So I, I I think we've got the mayor's word. We'd have to hold his feet to the fire. Yeah, I, I would I'm say just, I, would I say was just I was Ryan. just responding to what you said, Mr. St. Columbia, when you said that they did what they, they were working with the people. No, it has been said that they were going to do one thing and did a, a totally opposite. Well, yes, I, 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 Davis. I totally agree with what Ms. Uh, Crockett is stating. And you said Mr. Frank Columbia, you don't see what the problem is, but it is a problem for them. It's not a problem for you, but it is a problem for them. And you spoke of them being paid. That's not what they want. They don't want to be paid. They want to be able to use their lot as other people down there are using theirs for parking or whatever they want to use it for. Yeah. As well as other fest festivals are a great thing. We need to welcome as, as many things as we possibly can for this city but it needs to be done right and in order. And there is a problem. And all mm -hmm. we're trying to do is fix the problem and make sure that it's fair across the board. Yeah, and, and uh, Mr. St. Columbia, I'll just say that they're, they're kind of, everybody's kind of right here. They're, it just, the barricades got put down in the wrong place the year before last and it caused problems. And so I, when we met, if y'all will remember, there was sort of a meeting after the council meeting of the agreed parties. And what I agreed to do was to show up myself to make a 
to put it on myself, not on somebody I would order or direct to show up to make sure that those barriers are, are very difficult to move once they're pl in place. So to make sure they're put in place correctly the first time, I will personally guarantee it, personally show up so that that mistake does not happen again. But, um, so it's again, it's kind of both, everybody's right here. We're just trying to fix this problem, I think. And yeah, are Mr. there any other questions or comments? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, I have one. Mr. Mayor, it shouldn't be on your back. What, we, what should happen is this right here. Once, the, once, once you all pass this, uh, there will be another motion uh, for not to block those pro those properties anyway. I'm gonna make, to make a motion to once we pass this, because you shouldn't have to go down there. You shouldn't have to hold somebody's hand on fairness. Those people who have properties down there have a right to earn money. It's a festival. They pay property taxes, and they should. They have the right to use their uh, places for parking or whatever so once once this passes because it was it was said that it wasn't gonna pass once this passes i'll come back with a motion and i hope and, I, and i'm sure to get a second that we will not block those properties so you don't have to waste your time going down there to make sure a barrier is put in place i'll fix that tonight well we'll just we'll discuss that in a minute but i will make that commitment anyway because that was the plan initially it just got put in the wrong place and then it didn't get moved and it should have been moved if if i'd have known about the moving issue i would have taken care of that too um if that happened when i was there i think it did um but i do just want to make sure and um so i'll still commit to doing that but but anyway any other questions or comments yeah just just one um the, yes, sir, and, and and thank you. The the history I think is more troubling than 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 described about the five year period. Two years ago, which was the last festival, we did have that meeting after the meeting concluded, and uh, there was supposed to be a meeting. I want to say it was between the festival and some of the people who had concerns. Um, the festival had a meeting coming up in a day or so, and then it was supposed to report back to us at our, our next regular council meeting. And they actually canceled their meeting, didn't meet with the citizens, and didn't come to our meeting. And we had already approved the permit. So I hear what Mr. Franklin is saying. And um, I, I, I've had people calling me all week long in the last you know, couple of weeks because they believe in the, um, the propaganda that the council is trying to stop the festival. But what's actually happening is councilors trying to protect those citizens who have an interest in property downtown. And the only way to do it is to do it before you grant the permit. Now I hear what Mr. Franklin is saying, but once you grant the permit, the permit is granted and you start talking about a separate action, separate motions. Any stipulation should be placed into the permit so that it is a part of the actual permit that's granted to the festival. So I think if there's any changes that need to be made, any concerns, they need to be integrated into the permit so that we don't have separate actions taken by the body. So you got one document that says you can do this and then you have another motion that's in the minute somewhere that says you can do that. And, and Mr. Franklin, I understand what, you, what, what, you, what you're saying, but I just think it should all be integrated into the document that authorizes them to conduct business. And that way there's no question about what everybody's uh, referring to, what they're relying on, and how everybody's moving forward. And so to that end, um, I think that there needs to be some coming together between the parties and that's all everybody wants. Uh, people want the, the, the people who have businesses down there, property, uh, wanna have an opportunity. If this festival is so great for the citizens of Helena, West Helena and Phillips County, everybody ought to be able to participate in it and make money off of it. Um, uh, Mr. Daniel said something uh, a couple of weeks ago that kind of struck me, and that is, uh, and, and Mr. Daniels, I, I don't want you to take this as, as, as a side swipe, but it's just accurate. Uh, I have a law office that's down in the festival zone and has been for a number of years, as long as I've been here. And by Thursday, we can't conduct business because there's so many people down there, so nobody comes to the office because they can't get in. And uh, you made comments about, well, if they, if they have a business, they shouldn't be able to, to do something maybe that a vendor might be doing on the downtown area. Now, obviously I won't be trying to sell hot dogs and hamburgers outside of my law office. I'll just go home and work, from my, and work from home. However, some people have small businesses down there 
And if they can't do the thing that they primarily do during the festival, they should be able to make money in any way that is legal and safe and good for them to do it. And we shouldn't be placing restrictions on them uh, because long after the festival is gone, those are gonna be property owners right here in the city of Helena, West Helena. Mm -hmm. And if people are allowed, it, I see it in so many different kinds of ways. Um, down, the downtown area is basically a dead area in downtown. Yes. And so if we wanna encourage people to invest in property, maybe they do it for one day, one weekend out of the year. And if they do it for one weekend out of the year, but they want to invest money in the downtown area, whether it be Cherry, Walnut, or any of the uh, uh, the other streets that are in the festival zone, let's encourage them to do it. If they can come down and take an empty lot and sell some hot dogs and park some people and make some money. We should encourage people to do that because it is long-term good for all of us. And so I think all these issues need to be taken up in the permit process so that we don't go over it every year again and again and again mm -hmm. and again. We improve the permit because they submit the same thing every year. If we improve it as we go, we don't have to talk about it next year, the year after that, the year after that. We fix it now. And if there's something else that needs to be fixed next year, we fix it again and we do it again and again. But we don't leave those uh, uh, those repairs behind. We put it in the document and move forward. And that's all I got to say. And I will stay, stand down and be done. Okay. Mr. Uh, any other comments or questions on the motion? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Mayor, will Mr. St. Columbia or Mrs. Davis uh, change the motion to honor uh, Mrs. the people uh, the people that have the complaint with blocking their property? Can they change the motion uh, to not to block off those properties? As Mr. Ethel and I stated. Let me ask a quick question, Mr. Daniels. The, the agreement about... Um, the only thing that that I guess I'm I'm losing missing something maybe I thought there was something in writing a security plan uh, agreed to it's just it wasn't followed so no matter what we put in writing if it doesn't get implemented it doesn't matter anyway and I you, guess you, I mean I, you, put, I, you put money attached as Mr. Edley explained to me how we haven't already done that. Because it seems to me we have, it's more a question of implementation and enforcement than it is of what we put in the permit and what we put in the motion. And the only well, thing you can do about that is to is to create a monetary uh, damage situation for anybody if it happens again, and to make sure that your mayor, uh, you know, enforces what the permit and what the uh, security plan agreed to says. Uh, it was already agreed to, it's just that it wasn't implemented. I mean, so that's where I'm, that's where I'm, lo I'm lost here before we move forward. Well, if, if you're asking me directly, I'm not addressing any specific item that did get implemented or maybe was in the permit and didn't get enforced. I'm just making a, I was making a general response because Mr. Franklin said he would, he wanted to make a motion after the fact. I don't know what his motion is gonna be, but if it's not in the permit, I would suggest you get it in the permit. And so that's just a general statement. I didn't know about the barricades being placed in improper, uh, some of the stuff you kind of get on the fly. So I'm not addressing any particular issue, just a general statement. Let's not piecemeal it. If there's something that's a concern and needs to go into the permit, let's let's do it all in one in one wrap. Mm -hmm. Well, how exactly would you put it in the motion? I'm just curious how you how do you word that to, in to the alleviate motion? That? Yeah, how would that What's be worded? Thing? Or Mr. Valley, you can answer that too, I guess. If you if you can uh, if you're connected. Our granting, our granting of the uh, festival permit is to we approve something, a document that they've submitted to us. And we say, yes, you have approval to host this event within the parameters that are uh, outlined in your uh, request or your application. And so it's not in the motion. The motion is just to approve it or not approve. It. The details have to go into the, uh, the application or the, the permit that we're granting. I think that's what you're asking. I don't think his motion can, and that's the whole point. I don't think a motion, an oral motion, can cover everything. It needs to be in writing. Uh, 
May I say something, Mr. Mayor? Sure. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, I'm in total agreement. We should never, never block uh, without uh, giving them some type of compensation. Of course, that is what uh, KBBF is willing to do. They're willing to work with the people. And of course, I, I agree with Mr. Esselde on the fact that anyone that owns property down there should have the right to pay to sell things and do business with the public. Uh, and of course, if they're selling food, they naturally would have to be in uh, pay sales tax on that food and uh, report that. And so the city can receive revenues. And also, uh, they would have to be inspected by the health department. So, uh, I mean, we're covered there financially. They pay sales uh, on it. And if they did those things out of their own business, of course, they, they do have a license to operate their business. They could sell most anything they want to if they have a city permit to operate their business. So, But if they don't have a business and want to open one up, I think there's something uh, in our uh, an ordinance that they have to have, uh, have to be there at least two or three months before I think uh, they can start up a business down there to to gainfully participate in the festival. I, I don't know what that regulation is, but uh, if we need to have ordinances or resolutions to govern other things, all festivals and any any property owner's rights, I think that would be, like Mr. Franklin said, under another ordinance or resolution on it. But the main issue right now, we need to go ahead and, and, and approve the uh, a KBBF uh, uh, permit because uh, we have other people that want to have, uh, and of course, if we do, uh, they will have to comply the same as uh, any, any organization. Has. So I stand on my motion that we should go ahead and move forward with this uh, festival permit. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments this time? We do need to kind of move forward. We've got other guests and other things to talk about. Okay, um, the motion has been made, second discussion uh, has been held. Ms. Ramsey, call the roll. Mayor. I'm sorry, I would like to withdraw my second until the wording is done in the correct format. I must have. You said, did you withdraw your second? Is that what you said? Yes, until the contract uh, is worded correctly. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, may I ask uh, Ms. Davis what uh, proper language meant for her sorry. second? Sorry. Say that again. He, he was wants, wants to know how you would change the motion to incorporate the concerns, I think is what he said. Yes. Mr. Ethley just explained. I don't think it's the motion that she wants to be reworded. I think she, it's the contract between the city and uh, KBBL. Yes, that's what I was saying. The contract, the actual contract, the wording in the contract, not uh, your motion, Mr. Okay. Saint Columbia. Okay, well, Ms. Davis withdraws her second uh, from the motion. Is there another second to the motion still on the floor? So, Mayor, is it is it possible for uh, how long will it take Mr. Daniels to uh, draw up? Redo it. I'm sorry to uh, uh -huh. incorporate in that into the contract, the wording. I, honestly, I'm not sure because it's it's already alluded to. In the security agreement, the problem is it just wasn't in, enforced or implemented. So, but I'm open to suggestions. I mean, okay. Well, let me. No, I think I think the thing is that is being asked is to put in the agreement that they will not block not uh, block these people's properties in any short, shape, form, or fashion, and not to say that if they block it that they're gonna compensate them. I think the thing is that it's to be said that those that area is off limit to the Blues Fest. That's all, thank you. Okay. 
which he said it wasn't included anyway. So Mr. Daniels, would that be an issue for you and your committee just to reword that? Well, I uh, respectfully, I have to be very careful on what we're blocking and not blocking. Um, inevitably, this festival does occupy many blocks in the downtown area. And it says very specifically, uh, the 100 to 600 blocks of Cherry Street and the 100 to 400 blocks of Walnut Street, including the uh, connecting streets between. Um, for me to say that I'm not going to block any business would mean that that would void all of that uh, egress. Uh, I certainly am, am more than happy to say that I won't block specific properties and put that in a specific memo uh, as an addendum to this permit. Uh, but I cannot just broadly say um, for the interest of the, 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 that would open us up to all basically not being able to have the festival because we wouldn't be able to occupy those spaces essentially uh, blocking everything. Um, uh, it is not our intention to, to, to stop any egress, and, but there is a level of security and a level of patron activity that goes on on these streets. The, the, the ones I mentioned on Cherry and on Walnut, that there is foot traffic. We, we just simply can't have vehicles driving through there. That doesn't mean that we can't work with people. That doesn't mean we can't make things happen for people. Um, but um, my, 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 my bottom line is I, I can't just open language up in the permit to say we can't block any business because that's going to put us in a position where we're providing vehicular access through a crowded area for a, a business on Cherry Street. And um, I, 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 KBBF I, I maybe in the past has had some challenges uh, as the, one of the reasons why I'm with the organization now is to directly address those and to write a, a, a far more um, direct permit and it, it even includes in the permit specifics uh, what days we'll actually be occupying um, but uh, it is never our intention to, to stop commerce uh, but we also have to make sure that we structure an environment that that, that allows the folks coming from in a town, uh, out of town to have a good time, a safe time, and for commerce to happen legally under uh, what, uh, what is the permit process. Uh, no, Mr. Daniels, that's not what I was saying. I know you can't block everybody's business. Some people don't even care, but I, I, I was concerned about the property that was at hand and that was Ms. Boyd's because we've had an issue with that in the past. And you said that the way you had it, you all had it planned that it was not blocked anyway. So is it possible to include that in any type of language? I think that's certainly possible for that specific property. Um, in the interest of time and not taking up the, um, the, the council's time at the next meeting, if you would motion for that to be included just in the language right now, uh, we could handle that all in one spot. I'm, I'm more than willing to, to not block her specific process, uh, her, excuse me, her specific property along with the properties that we've already have agreements standing with. Um, but but I, I think we've, we've all now arrived on agreement. I think absolutely there's no reason for us to block her property. And I think us blocking her property puts our permit in jeopardy. And that is not something we have any interest in doing. And with the mayor, um, being on the ground, watching it uh, can 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 provide uh, necessary enforcement if that does happen. Okay, uh, what I want to say, you're not, you know, it's not, not a problem for me. You're not taking up my time. I can wait. You know, I'm wondering that if this can be modified, can we not have a special call for just that one item tomorrow? Sure, I don't have a problem with it. I'm agreeing with that, Mr. Yeah. Ford. I'm ready. I mean, and it'll take just a few minutes, I'm sure. Mr. Daniels, is it okay with you? That's certainly okay, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor? Well, I, I won't be able to attend it, but uh, I might be able to. I'm not really sure Dan, what the answer to that question is. Mm -hmm. um, so, but so, what, Daniel, any other, any other, any other, um, comments or it sounds like so there i'm taking it there's not a second to the motion so if that if that is correct then the motion dies for lack of a second uh, Mr. Day, when can you get that to uh the mayor or somebody so that they can get us because i need to see the in writing before i vote on it 
Uh, yes, ma'am. We, we'll work on it right away. So you should have that language to be honest with you shortly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much. Yeah, would, you like would, to it, would there be any, I think, aren't we, are, aren't we meeting next Tuesday? Ms. Ramsey? Yes, sir, we are. Would, we can get this done tomorrow. Well, only if you can all get together and get a quorum. So Thank let's, you. Just, let's just say this. Let's just say this. If y'all can get yourselves together, get a quorum and do it and get that done by tomorrow, that's fine by me. Otherwise, we'll put it on the top of the agenda before we do anything after the roll call uh, next Tuesday so we can at least dispense with it quickly. I think four people agreed. And, uh, you know, we always have the mayor pro tem. Uh, yes, ma'am, that's true. But you also have to get together on technology and or meet in person or you got to figure out the logistics of that. If you can figure out the logistics of that, then it is OK by me is what I'm trying to say. If you can't, then it, then we can also do a Tuesday, which is not too far away. It's a week. So I think okay, what, you, what Ms. Floyd is saying is that we are agreeing now to ask that a special call meeting be called for tomorrow. I think we just need a time. This is going to be the only thing on the agenda, and we'll do it just like we're doing this by Zoom. Can we not have it at noon? He'll have the thing to us, uh, the changes, the addendum to us before noon. Uh, Helen, if you would be so kind, really, you'd be appreciated uh, if you can uh, do a Zoom tomorrow. Can we not do this around noon tomorrow? Does it have to be 24 hours? You gotta. You have to give the media three hour notice. Uh, I guess I say it's only two or three hours, Ms. Dave. But you have to give them notice, and you have to give them a copy of what is, you know, what the agenda is, or something like that. I'm just. Jack, gonna, can you not what, send it to the media we, also? Miss Ford, Miss Ford, we will try to do that, and I'll leave it up to the staff to figure that out. If it's possible, it is. If it's not, then we'll do Plan B. But Mayor, I, I would like I would like every, to do everything that I can, and I'm sure the council to get uh, Mr. Jack his permit by tomorrow. Okay, thank thank you for that, um, and I think everybody heard that. So they will do the best they can. Is all I can do um, to try and make that happen. In the meantime, uh, it sounds like we need to move on. There's no. Uh, consensus to approve it tonight. So I'll trust y'all to get together um, and figure that out to the sufficient uh, to, to make Ms. Boyd happy and the rest of the members of the council uh, when it comes to the egress. Any other questions about that? And I'll just say this, uh, I will say this because I won't be involved in it tomorrow. I've also got a business downtown that has also been inconvenienced for years by the Blues Festival, including when we try to make deposits on Cherry Street, not to mention our parking lot, which is full of people instead of customers who don't can't find parking. It's extremely inconvenient, but our business is more than happy to be inconvenienced for a few days in, in order to make room for such a prestigious event in our city that we're proud of. And it's not, it's not, you know, it's not a fun few days. And sometimes we'll shut our business down because it's almost impossible to run a business. I certainly understand the inconvenience, um, but there's going to be an inconvenience when you have that popular festival. And I welcome that inconvenience because of what it means for our town. And I hope the spirit of that, which I do believe is the spirit most of our town feels about the festival, should not be sacrificed just for one individual. Because the other individuals in this discussion have already been, uh, are already happy and, you know, they're, they're good with the agreement we have. There's only one individual that I'm aware of who's still opposed to it. I don't know how you make that individual happy, but good luck doing that, and we'll move on. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your patience. Well, I would like to respond to you, Mayor, about your business. You got uh, right I hand. understand but your, your business is something that people can mail in or do. These people are trying to make money. You're not trying to make any money from the Blue Fest. These people are trying to make money on the property that they pay property tax on every year. That's the difference. Right. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Crockett. And thank and man, you. If I also, I just got this to say. I, Mr. Mayor, 
with with those people, Miss Boyd is not the only person. There were a group of people came about that property. Yeah, they the were all happy. They were all happy. Uh, about hold, it. Hold, 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 hold on, Mr. Mayor. My thing is this: the fest was here, and and anybody who wants to make a dollar, let them. They they pay property taxes. I'm I, no one is against the blues festival. When you got a festival, even with the gospel festival, even with the the uh, legendary festival, those people properly are not blocked. They're open, so they can make some money too. It's nobody don't want to. Nobody does not want to see the festival come here. It's just people want 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 to get ahead. That that that's that's what make America America a good place to live. When you got small business that can make a little change. Miss Board is gonna be here. Those Brown's funeral home gonna be here. Brown's funeral home was blocked off the last time. I was out there walking to make sure they didn't block these properties off. So it, it's not that we don't want it. We, those people deserve some fairness too. Those are our people. Those are our citizens. Those are our taxpayers. And, and people coming in for a couple of days, I'm, I'm grateful that they're coming. But the people who sacrifice cutting their grass, making downtown look, making their properties look good. Kib, Kib Delta's down there. The Delta Country and all those people are down there. Everybody is, is trying to work to make this festival work. But I don't think that you should be like, be like this. We're all trying to be, be the solution to yeah. the problem. And that's, you, and, and that's thank, what it is. Thank, thank you, Mr. Daniels. And we'll, I'll leave it up to you to get back with uh, the parties involved to get a resolution uh, by the deadline that was suggested. Thank you for your time tonight. Okay, we also have another gentleman that's been waiting patiently, Mr. Amos King, uh, regarding, I'm sorry, I'm, I just skipped over Mr. Sims. Is Mr. Sims available? Raymond Sims? Raymond Sims, I'm gonna give you, uh, didn't mean to skip over. Um, okay, well, maybe Ms. somebody can get Mr. Sims back on. I know it's been, a long meeting, and we've spent, spent an awful lot of time on on this uh, on the Blues Festival again. So uh, again, I'm going to recognize you, Mr. Imus King, uh, fellow classmate, football uh, and track, and about everything else uh, player of mine. And we want to welcome you uh, to talk about the event permit for Voices Across the River Gospel Fest on August 7th. Mr. King, you're recognized again. Thank you for your patience. Thank you very much this evening, Mr. Mayor. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everyone from Helena. Uh, just for the people that don't know me, I, uh, my name is Amos King. I'm a 1979 graduate of Central High School, uh, 1983 graduate of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. I'm from Helena, uh, born right there on 514 and a half Ellum Street. Uh, just moved around the world. I have uh, 28 year uh, retired disabled veteran. I retired a colonel in the army after 28 years, and I live down here in Atlanta. And I'm in the communication, radio, and TV business, and I, I'm in the promotion business. And uh, I wanted to come home and do a concert, a gospel concert, in Helena. This is not my first concert; it's the first one outside, but it's not the first one I've done in Helena. And I'm very excited about it, even getting the consideration. So. Uh, when I came here, I decided I was trying to partner with the uh, KFFA, and they agreed to partner with us for this uh, concert, and I'm very excited about it. I'll be doing it out of your way in five minutes. It's not going to take me long. Uh, all we're trying to do is bring our family and friends out that day to see each other again, relax, and have a good time. No money is going to be made. So there's a lot of problems there you don't even have to deal with. I'm going to sponsor the concert. I've already contacted the groups. And Make sure everything is on board. The stage is already set, but the, I understand I have to go through this process right here. I'm very much looking forward to coming home to put on this concert. And concert is uh, start at one o'clock with our children to be on the stage from one to three. If they got the talent to sing or whatever they want to do for two hours, then at three we'll have a, a sound check and the concert will start at five o'clock. It'll go from five to nine. Nine o'clock, we out of there. I've already talked to Mr. Jones about the cleanup. And I've ensured him that when we leave there, it'd be just like we found it. So he don't have to worry about that at all. 
But uh, we're just very excited to be coming to Helen to put this on uh, at this time. And hopefully, just like I said, it's a family and friend day. Uh, we're going to give away backpack to the kids because school is nearing. And uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. If you have some questions for me, I'd be glad to entertain them. I had a question for you, Mr. King. Yes. I'm glad that you uh, are interested in coming to our town. Uh, I move to the body that we accept Mr. King's permit. Mr. Franklin moves that I'll we second have... that, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Mr. I'll Franklin second. moves. Okay. I'll second the motion. Gotcha. Mr. Mr. Franklin moves that we adopt the event permit for the Voices Across the River Gospel Festival. August 7, 2021, Mr. Sanclamia seconds the motion to approve the, the permit. I'm glad to see it uh, See it happen. That's wonderful. Any we, need, we need more gospel singing up there. Any questions or comments from members of the council? Um, my only comment would be just make sure that um, on the cleanup, we didn't we didn't do that. I'm not sure we're going to get to it, either, but uh, that's that has been an issue um, in the past. The King Biscuit pays. If you saw the memo, pays the city pretty substantial sum for the cleanup, and also cleans up a lot of their own stuff. So that's always been a, an issue uh, for years. So just please uh, honor what you agreed to do with. Uh, I I will I will assure you that. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't anticipate no, no more, maybe two, 300 people coming out. I don't know how many are going to come out, but the place is going to look like we found when we leave. Great. Thank you, Mr. I King. think what the mayor is saying that it is customary that we have the, all of the department heads to sign off on it, and then it has to be signed saying that, you know, about the cleanup. I don't think it's uh, anybody, well, I know I'm not uh, trying to go against it, but one rule should apply for all. I think that's what's being said. Well, I, I, let me get an understanding. Are you saying, is there a fee I need to pay? Well, we actually, what, what's been on discussion is a deposit that you would lose if you don't clean it up yourself. Is, but what what is the deposit? But, but, but we haven't no, asked. I don't, I, we haven't, we haven't asked have anything, anything about a deposit, Mr. King. I think that you just have to have your name on the dotted line to say that the fire department, the police department, the uh, I've got street sanitation, all of these people have signed out. We have a standard form. For I've, got and I, I've got it signed by everybody. OK, then have you turned that in to Ms. Rams? I've, yeah, got, a, I, I've got a copy of it on my desk right now. Uh, OK, then. So I don't see a problem with OK. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. King one question. Uh, yes, Mr. Sir. King, if in the event, uh, you do not clean it uh, like it should be, or uh, as, as agreed by Mr. Jones, who's head of the city sanitation, uh, and he sends you a bill that he had to go back and clean it up. Would you pay that bill? Well, you want me to leave a five hundred dollar deposit just to make sure? That's up to you and the mayor. I would say. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Um, I'm Again, I'm willing to do whatever. It's, it's, it's not the, the money is not the problem. If you just tell me what I need to do, I'm, 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 I'm just asking you to, to honor your commitment to Mr. Jones. If we if we ask you to do that, we'd have to ask everybody, and I'd rather the council approve something. I'm giving promises. you my word. I'm giving you my word. Well, good enough for me. And I'm, I've known you for many years, and it's good enough for me. I just want to reiterate that because that's usually the problem is the cleanup the next day. And I know you've discussed that with Mr. Jones. So all my right, only point was, was to, to ask you to um, you know, keep that in mind. So any okay. other questions or comments? If not, call the roll. Davis. Thank Columbia. Yes. Crockett. Yes. Franklin. Yes. Etherly. Yes. Forward. Yes. Five yes, one offline. 
and motion passes. Thank you, Mr. King. Congratulations. We look forward to your festival. Thank you much, Mr. Mayor. And thanks again for being patient with us. All right. Good to see you. Um, so have, have we had a chance for Mr. Sims to get on yet? I don't have any paperwork on Mr. Sims. Was some included in our package? I don't see any. I'm looking now. Let me see. I see the one we just did. I don't see it. Ms. Ramsey, did we ever get the permit? Mr. Mayor, the only thing that I received today was the third sheet, which is the signature sheet that only had the fire chief and police chief on it. Mr. Jones hasn't signed off on it yet. I did notify Mr. Sims that the first two pages did not come through. And when I left the office at 435, it hadn't been resent yet. Okay. okay. Well, okay. And Mr. Sims, I take it, is not here. We can't oh, take that so matter up until the form's completed. Right. And we just place them on the agenda for the 20th. Right, that'd be good. Uh, or you could do it at the same time as this other, and if y'all so choose, as long as he gets his paperwork done and shows up. So uh, so we'll pass over to that. Uh, Can we place them on the agenda for the 20th? Yes, ma'am. Sure. As long as he's got his paperwork he, and he can show up then, I don't see him going on. Okay. Um, do we want to go back and discuss the, the cleanup since we, we started discussing that? Mr. Jones actually was, I think he was on. Mr. Jones, you still on? Mr. Jones. Well, and I don't believe. I don't believe we have anything in the packet anyway, but I mean, this is something y'all been discussing longer than I've been here, but um, if I, let's put it this way, and then so we can move forward. If y'all have any input comments about the discussion about putting, the, it is a problem, it's still a problem. Uh, we had a problem with the recent event down there, uh, not cleaning up and didn't have to pay. And, and, Mr. Jones can talk about that for a long time. But um, so the idea of a deposit um, for cleanup, which y'all have been discussing for a long time. Um, do do y'all have any consensus on that? I don't know. Do y'all want to bring, come, uh, come back with it later? It might be something, Mr. Mayor, that uh, you and the city attorney and uh, your uh, department head might want to get together and maybe propose a resolution or an ordinance concerning cleanup after a, an event of any event the city might have a uh, public event uh, you know to put up a deposit or something that'd be something that y'all might want to put in the form of an ordinance for future use for all but any event held downtown or in any of the areas, parks or whatever, by any organization. But we certainly want to keep our city clean and the people putting those things on should uh, be willing to clean it up or, uh, you know, after they use it or pay the city to do it. That's something you might want to work out with your city attorney and your department head as so far as cleaning it up, the cost of cleaning it up. Thank you for second. Other questions or comments or input? Okay. Well, I would think the bigger, the biggest question there is the amount of deposit that would be required and the conditions of losing that deposit. Um, if we have a, some kind of a consensus on that, it's fairly simple to write it up. Mr. Valley's had some connectivity issues tonight, so I can't, I can't tell if he's on or off or, or what, but... Um, I'm currently able to hear you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so if you want to get... Uh, if y'all have any suggestions on that, get that to us. And we'll try to put that on. I guess that we can add that to the agenda for next Tuesday as well, Ms. Ramsey. And if we could all get... 
if you can at least get to us your ideas about about that the amount and uh, the terms of, of losing the deposit. Okay, thank y'all. Um, all right, so that deals with most of the event permit issues. All right, so the first issue after that is a resolution that should be in your packet uh, yeah. to appropriate funds for parks department uh, for a parks coordinator is actually what the resolution says, uh, a $36,000 salary. Oh, that's in there, okay, sorry. For parks coordinator position, um, there's a resolution in the packet, so I'll let you look over that resolution. The um, parks were closed during most of the pandemic, uh, pretty much all the worst part of it. Um, in addition, um, there hasn't been a, I mean, this does not create a parks and recreation department. Um, I think that's a worthy discussion that we should have. And again, we'll, we've got some input, we've done some work on it. Um, what this does do is create a position for a coordinator that would help us um, coordinate the, pro the, the parts we do have now to help us work on in, uh, different uh, programs. Right. The North Helen Community Center would be the first one that comes to mind. It needs to be open um, every day and be accessible, but we have to have somebody from the city there. We're not leasing the building out to anybody. Um, we might have agreements with different programs to run projects. But again, uh, it really needs a, a person the way we have had in the past, who is there all day, every day, making sure that, um, you know, that it's, that it's open, accessible to, to, uh, to people that want to, who want to use it. Um, there's no plan to charge any kind of fees. Uh, it'd be much like it was years ago. Or, I mean, also there is a bike, bicycle uh, park behind that that was opened up right before I became mayor under Mayor Hallwell with the grant, I think, with the grant um, that hasn't seen much use either because there hasn't been anybody on site to monitor or be over that. So what this would do is it, would, it doesn't, it's not incredibly ambitious. It doesn't line out whole parks and recreation department. Uh, I think we do should have one. I think we should have that discussion. I think we should do that. We've already started in that direction, but it's summertime already, and it takes about a month to hire somebody, if not more than a month from the day you advertise it. Um, but I can't do that unless y'all give me the appropriation for it. Uh, the $36,000 comes from the coordinator position, I believe it was, Mr. Ramsey, that uh, we were looking back to see what those positions used to pay. Um, and that was the position that I felt like was probably the most reasonable um, to that. We can adjust that if you want. But as Mr. Turner pointed out earlier, um, we do have, we are blessed right now financially to be able to do it. We have our swimming pool did not reopen this year because the foundation that operates it uh, was not was not willing to come because they're still worried about COVID when it comes to swimming pools. But they did obligate to come back next year. Um, we think the swimming pool program will be right, you know, back where it was again. We hope next year. Um, but it's been closed for two years because of COVID. Um, there are a lot of things, grants, and a lot of a lot of things that need to be done in that arena. Um, we're already stressed uh, as a city, or our city employees, including this one, are already stressed as far as trying to do as much as possible uh, with the people we have. So um, we really need a person who is dedicated to keep that building open, to supervise it, to make good use of it, and to help us go the next few steps. Um, it'll be advertised, it'll be, and you can send me candidates if you want to, or anybody could for that matter. Everything that we have to do normally will be done with this one. It just hasn't been appropriated. And I believe Mr. Valley would have to uh, 
I don't know if we ever got to do the base pay amendment, but right now it's a resolution. So as I've said enough and it's getting late. Any questions about that? Yes, uh, yes sir. Mayor. Ms. Davis. Ha Mayor, have we heard anything about the grants that were written for the parks, parks and recreation? No, we haven't. As far as being awarded or approved or, or denied even, we haven't heard. I know Ms. Ramsey said she was going to check with uh, Ms. Sharon to see. Ms. I, I, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. ma'am, I will. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as, of last, as of last week, we had not been approved for any. But Go ahead, Mr. Parker. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, I think that's a good idea, but I got this one for you all. It's it's not it's nice that you want a program coordinator to to, to run the par parks, but what we should do is there's a the city has multiple parks. There is a park over, uh, close uh, right uh, uh, three blocks over from Miss Davis's house, and over beside kind of like where Mrs. Uh, Betty Faye Brimley lives, uh, coming around the curve from Washington, not Washington Street from Russell. Now. The city has all these parks, but they're not being I, I, what the thirty-six thousand dollars could be, be, be put for right for this year. This is me saying, put that thirty-six thousand dollars on getting these parks up to code to look better. Use that thirty-six thousand dollars this year to get those those parks where they are usable. You just say it like now. I know it's on Washington Street Park. There is a bike trail, but the bike trail been there for years because I'm from over on that side of town. It's always been a park, a, a, a bike trail through there now the grass has not the grass needs to be cut on the back side of it there used to be a baseball field back there we used to play baseball back there at the park on washington is called the water l sims memorial park i would like to see we use that thirty six thousand dollars to get all of our parks up to code get the grass sprayed get get it, get it up and ready so then we could see what we can do about uh, appropriating money for a parks director but right now we can get our parks up to code where people want to come if you can even get them uh, up to code before the Labor Day weekend, I I'll be in, in favor of it. But right now, I can't be in favor for something that our parks look so bad, uh, look so bad. And if you would, if you want to do something, I think uh, if, in each ward there's a park. There's a 10th Street Park over where I live now. I Mr. Ethel has one. Miss Davis and Miss Davis has one. Uh, Miss Ford and Miss Crockett has one. Me and Mr. St. Columbia have. I think we have one. 10th Street. Washington belongs to Mr. Ethel and Ms. Davis. Uh, the Cleo Dunnett's Park belongs to Mrs. Ford and Mrs. Crockett. So those parks, and then you got the, uh, no, actually Ms. Ms., uh, Mr., uh, Ms. Davis and Mr. Ethel have two. Uh, they have the Washington Street Park and the park over, uh, that has not been developed, but it's, it's a park over there. Uh, when, when you're going around from uh, Russell, from around Russell is, is, you know, it's a park there. So there's two parks in Mrs. Mrs. Davis and Mrs. Ethel's ward. There's one in me and Mrs. St. Columbia. And then there's two parks over, well, it's all one park, the Cleo Dunnett's Park and the little baseball park over there uh, in, in, in North Carolina. So I would like to see that we take the initiative of getting those parks up and ready and cleaned up before we get a director. Because a director will have to come in and get it all together themselves. But if we got $36,000 to Put forward I think I would like to see that put to get those parks up and running. Mr. Franklin, where is the park that's close to me? Miss Davis. If, if you don't know us, I'm not to say it like them, is that there is a park. Um, do you you know what L, right behind LT Sims house, when you go down L, where LT Sims live at, you go around, there is a park there. Uh, right there is, is right. It's in Miss Betty Faye Brimley knows where it is. Uh, I've been to that park several several times. It's off from. Uh, I know what you're talking about? It's no longer a park, but I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Mr. Christopher Franklin, we have yes, 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 Solomon yes. Park, and we also have the Eliza Miller Park. I'm, I'm in, sorry, Miss Ford. <laughs> I'm sorry about that as well. I I I, I, I sorry, but those I'm. And include Miss Ford and have more parks than anybody in their ward. I'm sorry, Miss Ford, but uh, like I said, uh, those parks are. If you're gonna hire a director, thirty-six thousand dollars 
could get our part together. With that kind of money you want to put in, 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 in this, it was just at the peak of summer, I think that we can get those parks sprayed and together. And that's in this board, it said the Solomon Park and um, the Miller Park. We can get all those together and make them look like parks again. And then over here, where I was telling Ms. Davis, the park in her ward, and, and, and over in our city, not well, over in our city, we can get that together to make it look like there are several parks in the city. Even the 10th Street, Street Park needs a little attention. You know, so I think if we can appropriate $36,000 for a salary, we can take $36,000 this year and get the parks up and running it together, replace some of those bleachers, get some wood and, and re replace that. And it will give the person to come in some kind of a vision because we need to give them a start. Right now they don't have a start. So we need to see, well, can you get $36,000? And I'd be happy to help appropriate that money into getting our parks together. So when we, when we can find somebody who's qualified for that position, I'll be happy to fund that position next year. But this year, I would like to see the parks taken care of, and I'll yield back. Okay. Well, and just there's also tennis courts over by Woodruff. There are a few others. We, we have an off. We when we're, we're blessed that we have a lot of parks. Uh, we have a lot of neighborhoods, but we also have a lot of parks. Um, they haven't been adequately maintained, in my opinion, for many many years. Um, we've had a lot of um, volunteers. I wanted to mention Quade Duvall and Hope Church brought a lot of people out to the ball fields in North Helena and helped a lot. Um, we have a lot of people who do try. We are spraying them already. I don't know if Mr. Jones is still on here to tell you that, but um, and trying our best to keep up with, with the mowing. But I do think we have to have, we have, and we have the money to afford a uh, all of that stuff is great, but you got to have somebody do it. You have to have somebody do it. And that's what the $36,000 is for, um, is somebody to coordinate it, to, to get it to where, to, to get all of our vision, uh, visions for parks and recreation put together and at the same time provide something now for our kids to go into these places and use them, especially the buildings and, and one in North Helena, but they'd be responsible for all of them um, and trying to help us get to that place and whether it's um, actual cash funding out of our budget, which, which will be some of it, volunteers uh, or grants. We need a coordinator. Uh, we have to, the most valuable component of that vision is to have people doing it and the city has to at least commit to a full-time individual to be responsible for that it doesn't have to be a department head or even a department but we do need not at this point i i, I hope we all i hope we all want that again eventually but we need to at least have a, a coordinator and that's what this is any other questions and comments I'm I've been looking at the old base pay ordinances. It's not in the base pay ordinance, so it would require an amendment to the base pay ordinance to add this position to create it and to fund it. Also, I would like you all to consider, uh, I've heard the mayor's request for 36,000. Uh, when we consolidated, when we had a parks department and for the years that we had a after consolidation, you consider all the parks y'all named as well as the responsibility for the golf course. You had the golf course, uh, the a National Guard Armory in, in Helena. Uh, you also had all the parts that Mr. Franklin has named and, and those that, that uh, also have been named by Ms. Ford. Uh, so it is quite an undertaking. It's not something that's small. Uh, I don't know the current status of, of, of the, what we have with the, with the golf course because we hadn't had a, a uh, parks department in a while. But when you're considering that also, may I suggest you take into consideration that that responsibility is as well. The city owns the golf course out of the airport and the park director used to, used to deal with that as well. Um, but we need a base pay and they need to consider a salary that, that's com commensurate with all that. I think both you and with Franklin raised great points. Uh, it's more of a chicken or egg conversation. You think you need personality person there, but also there needs to be appropriation to, to deal with uh, so that they can use it. Uh, I would ask that, that I'll draft the base pay to, to put this on the agenda for next Tuesday. I think that uh, both Mr. Franklin and uh, the mayor have great points in that 
something needs to be decided sooner rather than later and not kick down the road. Also asked to be put on the agenda, the mayor and I have been having discussions all summer about section 3.3 job postings. And uh, we need to give you all a copy of that. Uh, part of this, uh, when we first, excuse me, when we first consolidated, we created it where it requires 10 days notice to hire positions. Uh, mayor, subsequent mayors have had difficulty because of the time frame of hiring. Uh, Mayor Hollowell expressed concern for me as well as Mayor Smith expressed concerns. The concerns are, is that by the time that we finished the 10 day advertising, people moved on and received another job. And so uh, I, I asked for us to have an earnest discussion about what time frame necessary. You may not want to change it at all, but that's something that uh, he would like you all to consider. He's talked to me about it several times. And uh, is something that, that we may look at a more contemporary method of advertisement and keeping the advertisement uh, that you have to some degree. Uh, but the issue that he's expressed to me and other department heads is by the time they finish the advertisement, the person has hi been hired somewhere else. And so the, the, the question becomes, is that effective? And is it something that you still want to hold on to as far as the 10 day requirement? But uh, that's a discussion that needs to be had uh, with the council versus just with me. Uh, but he's talked to me about it at least 10 times since he's been mayor. And uh, uh, I just wanted to bring that forward as we, be, as you could con considering uh, this, this, this the possibility of new position, uh, section three point of, of your of city's uh, employee handbook, which mandates at least 10 days advertisement uh, for um, he was discussing with me whether you all could reduce it to five days or something less one week or internet, but that's not for me. It's a policy of the city council to determine uh, whether this is effective and how, how uh, it works properly. Uh, but there are some other updates that we'll discuss later this year with the personnel handbook. But I yield because I don't want to hold your time and all the hours late. Mr. Bannon, before you go. Yes, sir. Mr. Bannon. Yes, sir. When the golf course, uh, the golf course, we what we did was the people who took responsibility of the golf course, they decided they wanted to keep their their people that they had. They, they brought their own people in to cut the grass a special way out there. So that was a, that was in their contract when we get when we uh, let them take on the responsibility of the golf course that they would they got their own people out there, their own machines. It's like six of them, Mr. Walter Simpson, Mr. Mr. I've got uh, Mr. Schiffler and a couple other people. I understand. Uh, they, they, they took their responsibility. I understand, but all I'm so, saying uh, is at some point that contract will, will come to an end. And when the contract comes to an end, that's also something to consider as far as it is. And while while they had the contract, it's still city city property. Still, it's still owned by the citizens of the city of Helena, West Helena. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Valley. Other questions or comments about the resolution? Yeah, I, I really hate to come in at this point because it's after eight o'clock, but uh, since it's coming back, I want to put this in, every, in, in everybody's mind. And this is my position on it. Um, since I've been here, uh, I don't know that anybody has been a greater, you know, supporter of parks than I have. And that's from both city and uh, uh, a and uh, doing things that we've done for parks over the years. And uh, um, there's one thing that I learned about parks and recreation. Um, and that's because I've also served on the board for the Boys and Girls Club for a number of years, not actively in the last few years, but um, shortly after his creation, when Jason Rowland was the director and all the success they had. Um, you know, we had a we had a contract with them at one point in time, and, and I was uh, really in, in favor of that. Uh, but not mm -hmm. just because I was on the board; it's because I learned from that experience how highly trained they are, how highly coordinated they are, and specialized with programs. And it opened my eyes to the fact that you can't just open a department of people and give them titles and say you're now Parks and Recreation and really, really, really be productive and successful. Now, it looks like you are from the outside looking in, but my experience taught me a whole lot. 
about programs and the training that we'll have to have in order to run successful programs. And it is for that reason that I supported the last go around that we had where they actually worked out of the uh, armory. And I guess there was some issues with the building and they pulled out of it. But at this point, I haven't been in favor of reopening parks and recreation because I think I came to believe that it was just a waste of money. Uh, we had some good people and I'm not, I'm not really trying, I'm not trying to uh, disparage the people who tried to operate as parks and recreation directors because some of them did a wonderful job with what they had. But if you don't have the proper training and resources to throw at the department itself, you just fill in a position with a body. And just opening up a building and rolling out basketballs and, and, and jump ropes and all that kind of stuff, I, I think is not really um, in our best interest. It seems like it sometimes, but I think it's more window dressed than anything. People get to say the building is open and my kids can go down there. But I don't think it's really effective. And so uh, we talked about this back at budget time. I think you mentioned it, uh, the mayor mentioned it. And I said then, and it may have watched over everybody's ears, but I'll say it again. This has to have a real plan in place before you do it, if it's really, really, really gonna be successful. And what that means is, who are the people gonna be? What level of training are they gonna have? What types of programs are you gonna have? And where's the funding for, for the programs gonna come from? Because if you just open up a building again, I said, put somebody over there and say, hey, you're in charge, throw some stuff together. It looks nice, but it really, 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 there's another level of this that you're not even touching and not engaging in. And at some point it just becomes, I think, a waste of money. So I would encourage everyone to really, really think about that as you go forward on it. And if you if you read between the lines, I'm not a supporter at this point for all those reasons, but I'm not trying to encourage or discourage anybody. Uh, parks and recreation programs, I think are always necessary to have some sort of program, some sort of facilities in place. Uh, I think it enhances the uh, quality of life for our citizens. And so I think it's something that we certainly have to consider. But I want us to put our best foot forward when we do it. And, and I, I'm not in favor of just throwing somebody in a position and saying we have a department. Uh, my two cents now, I'll, I'll be quiet. Other members of the council. Well, I think um, opening up the facility or opening up the position is a great idea. I do agree with. Um, Mr. Ethley, on some things as far as having a plan, I think there should be a plan. I don't uh, agree to just, you know, having it open just for basketball, but uh, perhaps we will have somebody will be able to hire somebody with training. You know, maybe we can come up with uh, some way or maybe they have a solution to where we can get resources from, along with hopefully we will one day be approved to get those grants that we apply for. I mean, just looking into the future, hopefully, you know, we can get it to where it needs to be one day. It won't be right now, but I'm sure if we work towards it, we can get there. Just thinking positive. Other members of the council. Hmm. Uh, it is getting late. And uh, I mean, I'll, I'll certainly take a motion in a second on the resolution. We couldn't do it until that, uh, as Mr. Valley pointed out, until we amended the uh, base pay, which wouldn't be able to happen probably until next Tuesday. Um, but I'll, I'll stop there for just a second, see if there's a, uh, a motion or a second. So we'll try to put that on the agenda, Ms. Sandy, with uh, base pay ordinance next Tuesday. M my only uh, comment would be that um, when I was campaigning, I heard a lot of outcry about the need to have a real parks recreation, recreation program again. Um, Ms. Mr. Everly, you're a busy man. Uh, I'm busy. Um, we need a person as a coordinator, not as a department director. I mean, it's not what I'm calling it. I'm not even calling it the parks department at this point, just a coordinator. Um, even when Boys and Girls Club were trying to use the, uh, the North Helena Community Center, they were supposed to be members, um, or at least that's what I'm told, that they had to be a certain age. 
that have certain that have a membership to Boys and Girls Club. I'm a big supporter. I believe I agree with everything you said about the Boys and Girls Club. Um, please don't misunderstand that. Uh, but they made the decision not to stay there for a lot of reasons. I think um, part of it might have been, you know, we did lose Jason and uh, tragically. Um, but long before there was a Boys and Girls Club, that Hell North Hell Community Center was there, was open and had people who worked there that kept it open and allowed anybody to walk in there and use it. And it was sub, there was supervision by the city, not leased to anybody, by the city to make sure that, uh, that the facilities weren't abused, that fights didn't break out, all that kind of stuff. It was tremendously popular. Uh, it was opened under, I believe, Mayor Kelly, um, and then my mother reopened it um, and broadened it. And then I think the addition to the, of the bike park is really incredible. We've made a lot of, we fixed up a lot of stuff in there and it's being used. We really need it open all the time. Right now, especially while they're out of school, um, to give young people something to do. And we need somebody to be in charge of getting those nets back up on the basketball courts. Um, we need somebody to stay on us to make sure we're doing what we ought to be doing as far as keeping the grass mode and all that stuff. We need a coordinator. That's the bottom line. And that's what this does. So my response would be, this is not, we need a plan. We do. And we need people who are trained and all of that. I agree with that. But more than any of that, we need somebody who's going to do that. And that's what this position would do. Otherwise, it's just going to rock along like it has for the last few years. And that's not acceptable to anybody. So I'm open to any suggestions, but I do think we need an actual person to do this. It's, that, it's important enough that we have a person whose job it is to work with us, including you, Mr. Adderley, and your experience and everybody else, to build a proper parks and recreation department that would be effective and would work. And in the meantime, provides a resource for these kids. We need something to do in our city. There's no swim bowl this year. We've had COVID, it's been tough. On well, everybody, um, we need somebody dedicated to that. I'll stop my speech. We'll put it, <laughs> put it on the agenda for Tuesday and, and move on. I, I, before we close, if there's no objection, I know Ms. Ramsey really would like to do this ordinance, uh, waiving bidding on the purchase of HVAC units for Fire Station 98 Plaza 704. Cherry, do we have that in the packet now? Ms. Randy. Mm, no, sir. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bally will have it for us Tuesday. Okay. All right. So I guess we'll move that also. Um, I'll just open it up to the council. Do y'all want to move everything on here to next Tuesday? What would y'all like to do from here? Yes, I will. Anybody else? Well, if there's no objection because of the lateness, so it's about 8.30. We'll move all these items to the Tuesday agenda uh, and the King Biscuit event permit pending whatever, whatever y'all do tomorrow on that. Um, is there any objection to that? Okay. All right. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. So move. Ms. Davis, Ms. Crockett, please adjourn adjournment. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed. All right. Means adjourned. Thank y'all very much. We'll see you next week or some of you tomorrow. Have a good evening.